Hey there! Today I decided to try a little bit different format to my video. You can see the updated background, slightly different angle, and the format will be that mostly me talking about different things, sharing my thoughts, my philosophy behind those things, kind of like that. So let me know in the comments if you like it or not. Topic of today's video and thing that I wanted to share for a long time is custom keyboard layouts, specifically my keyboard layout that I'm running right now, why I designed it the way I designed it, different decisions I made, things that didn't go as well as I wanted them to go. So let's start with why you might even want to have a custom layout. So there's a variety of different keyboard layouts, including like QWERTY that we all know. There's also Dvorak, Colmac, and millions of others. But custom keyboard layouts are slightly different. You need a specialized software, uh, specifically a firmware on your keyboard that allows you to do different things, or software on your uh, computer that also allows you to customize the way the, the keyboard behaves. So it's not like a built into any keyboard thing. So why you might want to want it. If you want your keyboard to behave the same way on every machine you're connected to and reflect your workflow, complement your workflow, you might want to get into custom firmwares or custom layouts. So essentially, if you want control over your keyboard, as much control as possible, you want a um, custom keyboard layout. Now, about my layout and why I designed it the way I designed it. First of all, I started doing that a few years ago when I first got my hands on Corn Keyboard, which is an open source, open hardware keyboard that you can literally download from GitHub. And the first time I saw the firmware and the possibilities it gives, I was really pumped about one feature specifically, which is layers. And if you read about custom keyboards, custom firmwares, you will see that layers pops up quite a lot. And it's uh, probably the main feature on these keyboards. So I was really pumped about it. And I created a keyboard layout with like 10 of them and was really proud of myself was showing off everywhere that I have these tons of layers, but it didn't really work long-term because I had to remember every key that triggers a specific layer and it was a mess, so it didn't work. I started stripping down the layer system down from 10 down to currently I have five, including the main one. And so how the layers work, essentially you can imagine shift key that when you don't hold it, you uh, typing, you produce lowercase letters. And when you hold your shift key, you produce uppercase letters. So layers on custom firmwares are pretty much the same, but you can put any key on your layer. So it can be function key, it can be a symbol, it can be a letter, it can be modifier keys like shift, command, and option. And uh, combinations, you can even put different layers on those layers, so you can have like nested layers. It's a pretty powerful feature. Another feature that I use really, really often, pretty much all the time, is home row mods. This is a technique where you take your modifier keys and you put them on the home row. So essentially your uh, letter keys becomes double function keys where you uh, tap the key and it produces a letter and you hold the key, it produces uh, a modifier key. So in my case, it's uh, shift control option command from index to pinky finger on both hands. And also I have custom layers on pinkies. So my pinkies serve triple function. They can tap to produce letters and they can hold specific key to produce either modifier or uh, trigger a layer. 
Next feature is combos, combo keys. So it's uh, when you press two or more keys to produce some command. In my case, it's uh, remapping for escape. So S and T on my left hand produce escape. Oh, by the way, I use Colmax, so uh, it will be slightly different from QWERTY. On QWERTY, I believe it will be D and F. Uh, so index and middle fingers produce escape. And a couple more, but those are not as essential as, as this escape key. And thumb cluster. Thumb cluster is a bunch of keys on the, your keyboard where your thumbs are located. And thumbs, being the strongest fingers on our hands, can do much more than just tapping a spacebar. So I use them a lot. My thumbs usually rest on thumb cluster and uh, I have four different functions to them. So first function is just tapping the, the symbol. I have spacebar, tab, enter, and backspace on my thumbs. So it's four functions instead of uh, just one. And also each key on my thumb cluster serves as a layer trigger. So I have number and navigation layers there. Now, how I design the layers. As I said, I had a bunch of them in the first iteration of my keyboard layout. Right now I have just five, so I stripped it down, keeping the functionality of these layers intact. But I combined some layers together. For example, I have navigation layer and tmux layer combined together. So like on my right half of the keyboard, I have navigation keys, arrows, and on the left half, I have tmux shortcuts. So essentially, when I hold key on the right hand, I can use my left hand to access the tmux hotkeys. And when I hold my thumb, um, I don't really remember. It should be spacebar, I guess. On my left hand, I can use navigation keys with my right hand. So it's switching between two hands. And the same philosophy applies to everything. So each layer has double function. I have symbol layer, for example, that also is split into two halves, one for each half of the keyboard. And when I trigger it with my pinky, the other half of the keyboard becomes active and I can type different, different symbols. So I decided to just follow this uh, principle where I essentially combine different functionality on one layer. So all that is to minimize the layout as much as possible. One of the goals I had in mind when I was designing the last version of my keyboard layout was that each key should be within one re key reach from the home row. And I ex actually ex achieved that. So anything that I want to press is just one key or less from the home row, even thumb cluster. Thumb cluster and uh, modifier keys, for example, are in zero keys reach, which is kind of cool. Oh, and by the way, my keyboard, Voyager, is 52 keys keyboard, but the way I designed the layout it allowed me to strip down everything to 34 keys or less. So each layer on my keyboard has 34 or less keys. And that means that basically, top layer, uh, top uh, row of the keys, and both uh, left and right rows, uh, columns of the key, keyboard are just unused. They're empty on each layer. And on some layers, even inner uh, right and left columns are also unused. I want to try 32, 34. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm currently writing 34 keys, and I want to try to strip it down to 28 just as an experiment. Maybe it will work. Because I know guys who had like 16 keys lay lay layouts and it also worked just fine for them. So probably um, 28 keys is just fine. Maybe it's, well, it, it will be worse for typing, fast typing, I mean. But yeah, just an experiment. Anyway, you can see how powerful this can be. And I'm not even using half of the functionality of this kind of keyboards. If you go into documentation and start reading about 
all the stuff that these uh, keyboard keyboards can, you'll be blown away. Now, how to design your own keyboard layout. At this point, I hope you all excited about this. Um, if you haven't been using this kind of keyboard and this kind of keyboard layout. Anyway, start small. My first customization to my keyboard was remapping uh, caps lock to control key because I'm an active user of Tmux and I use control key as uh, a lot because it's one of the essential keys in Tmux. So I remapped on my regular keyboard, I remapped caps lock to control and it was a game changer. I was really impressed by how this one little thing can improve the workflow. You don't have to use custom keyboard or fancy keyboard for hundreds of uh, dollars. Uh, doesn't, doesn't make any sense if you're just starting. You can download software on your computer. If you're using Mac, it's Carabiner Elements or Kmonad. I believe it also supported on Linux or it was supported on Linux in the first place and then went to Mac OS. But anyway, there's plenty of software solutions to that that can help you customize the way your keyboard behaves. Start from there and iterate over. You can achieve a lot of functionality from these custom firmwares with just software and your computer. Then you can start tr trying out different keyboard layouts that are already built by someone else. For example, my keyboard layout is built on top of uh, Mirioko, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, very popular layout for custom keyboards. And also inspired by layouts uh, from Pascal Guité. I hope really that I pronounced it correctly. Probably I didn't. Um, Anyway, this guy is an act active contributor to QMK firmware, which uh, Voyager is running. And he's also, he, he's a real, in, a real nerd about keyboards. He has a ton of articles about keyboards, how he designed his layouts, how he customized his uh, firmware, a lot of stuff. I will share a couple of links in the description to, to just uh, share some awesome stuff that he, he did with his keyboards. And he's also, by the way, running Voyager as his daily driver. Yeah, this guy is also author of Accordion. If you uh, use QMK with home row mods, you probably know about it. And Cordial Hold, which is a feature built into QMK, which is essentially a, a better version of Accordion. Yeah, so really, really cool guy. Just a little ad for him. Don't try to achieve your dream layout from the get-go. It will not work out and uh, you will be disappointed in long term from your first ever keyboard layout. Iterate over, experiment, uh, try different things. You will probably find that something works for you, some things doesn't. Um, and yeah, you will just throw away a bunch of stuff. So iterate, try, experiment, that's it. And one essential thing about designing your own keyboard layout is that you must think as a designer, not as a typist, because you're building a UX for yourself, for yourself in the first place, but maybe in the future you will try to, uh, you will want to share your work with others. But you're, you're stunning for yourself and you're, trying to build a better UX from the interface that you're familiar with, uh, which is already pretty well thought and used by millions of people. Um, and trying to improve something that already has a real strong foundation is really hard. So just focus on thinking as a designer uh, plan things ahead and try to logically understand which things might work for you. So like, 
in my case, I was designing symbol layer based on the article from Pascal. And uh, I was trying to tailor this layer to my specific workflow. I'm a software dev, so uh, I use different languages and I needed this symbol layer to complement my la uh, the languages I use. So certain symbols or certain combinations of symbols will be produced as fast as possible. And there's symbol layer is a journey on its own and uh, maybe I will share um, my thoughts about it in the future. But for now, you can just uh, read the article from Pascal. It's an amazing, very uh, well thought, uh, deep, deep article about uh, how to actually design the symbol layer. Yeah, based on existing layouts, you can build your own or maybe existing layout will work for you as is. These things happen as well. Essentially, it's trial and error. Okay, I think that's everything for today. Let me know in the comments if you already using custom layout. Share links to your GitHub or Oryx if you use Voyager. Or if you just starting, ask questions. I'll be happy to answer. And also, I think other people who already are into uh, custom keyboards will also join the conversation and uh, answer your questions. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.